Business's Big Podcast. So my wife's outside my studio. She's got a photography studio in the house, and she is playing a podcast over the speaker system. Great host. If I named the podcast, you would know it. It was with a major production company. And I hadn't heard it for a while. Recognized the host. Hey, is that what you're listening to? She says, yes. They brought in a couple comedians. Changing the format. That seems to be a trend. I'm going to talk about trends. This is Build a Big Podcast, the marketing podcast for podcasters. If you want to grow your podcast audience, build a bigger podcast that gets attention, that spreads messages, that makes you money, that makes your mother proud, you are in the right place. Bigpodcast.com is the website. I've got a weekly newsletter. It's called Big Podcast Insider. That goes out every Friday morning, New York City time. If you want it, it's at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. That's where all the links are to everything that I'm talking about. And here's what's in this issue. The best podcast format? That's a question. The harsh reality of podcasting. Podcasting skews younger. 25 rules for running a great podcast. Isotope has a new product. You can get it free. Let's talk about release deadlines. Also some classified ads, things that will help you to grow your podcast audience, get more attention for your podcast, get more sponsorship dollars for your podcast, the things that this podcast is about. This episode of Build a Big Podcast is brought to you by Riverside.fm, a virtual studio that makes recording and editing at the highest quality possible, accessible to anyone. You're going to look and sound your best. That's because Riverside records you and your guests locally, bypassing poor or unstable internet connections, giving you studio quality audio and video. Lightning fast editing if you're doing video, up to 4K video resolution, instant transcriptions with 99% accuracy. Here's another thing. You can edit audio and video just like editing a text document. It's a great way to get rid of bulk. If you've got one of those comedians on your podcast, he's like, blah, 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 thinks he's so funny. It's not funny. Remove the paragraph, boom. When you're going back to do the fine edits with your ears, you don't have to listen to that again. This is what I recommend. Go get a free account at riverside.fm. They're going to give you a couple of hours for free. You can try it. All these tools that I'm talking about, try them. You get full carte blanche access to it. See what you think about it. Use it for an interview, maybe two. If you want to keep it, this is the discount code. Big Podcast, B-I-G-P-O-D-C-A-S-T. That's going to get you 15% off. The free account, two hours free. Riverside.fm, if you want to keep it and get 15% off. Big Podcast, that's the code, B-I-G-P-O-D-C-A-S-T. You know how this works. I go from thing to thing to thing. All those things that I mentioned, they're all about podcasting, so it gets a little bit confusing. And in between each element, you're going to hear this. That's how you know it's time to turn the page. Go to newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Get the links. Get more information. That's how you know that I'm moving to the next thing. Ready? Here we go. The best podcast format? Interview format podcast. They've got a lot of advantages. They've also got a lot of disadvantages. For example, not all guests are created equal. Scheduling guests can be difficult at times. Sometimes the guests that you are talking to show up on a tin can and a string, maybe a speaker phone from the middle of a Starbucks. They sound awful. I think this is why so many people who like a second voice, which is what a guest gives you, they're moving to a co-hosted format. I mentioned this podcast at the beginning of the episode. They're bringing in comedians. It livens things up a bit. A couple of episodes ago, this podcast, I talked with Jim Cullison. He's co-host of a few successful podcasts, including... Ask the podcast coach. We talked about finding a co-host, partnership agreements, how to come up with guest segments, reputation management, because your co-host does something stupid, well, you kind of get dragged in there. You can listen to it on the feed, bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. That'll get you set up. You can listen to it at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. I mentioned this because it was such a powerful episode, about an hour long. You don't have to listen to it all at once. But if you're thinking of moving away from being dependent on guests, and you like a second voice, you don't want to do a monologue, this may be an opportunity for you. I want you to consider it. Go to podcast.bigpodcast.com. When you subscribe, you're going to get it. Bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. If you are doing one of these co-hosted podcasts, I want to know about it. I'm looking for examples to feature in my new book. You can reach out to me via Mastodon, Blue Sky, or Threads. Let me know what you're doing. And you can get those links at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. This is episode 184. The harsh reality of podcasting. Everything here is in the title. And the title is if you're asking how to get more people to listen to what you make now, you are probably going to fail. This is something that I run into all the time 
with people who work with me in Big Podcast AMP, the audio monetization program, with companies who want me to produce their podcast. We want to think that what we are doing now is perfect. It's just a matter of getting people to hear it. And there's some truth to that. It's tough to stand out in a crowded marketplace, the internet, crazy, crazy, a lot of noise. But one of the things that you have to look at if you want more listeners is that what you are doing now may not be working. We don't like to admit this. We're very close to our work. We think we've got the one true religion and we want to do what we want to do because we're right. We have found the way and we are right for ourselves. But when it comes to reaching new people, we're going to have an easier job if we focus on making what they're interested in, not finding a way to convince them to listen to what we make now. You are not in the convincing business. If you are having to convince people to listen to your podcast, maybe it's you. More thoughts on this, newsletter.bigpodcast.com. This is episode number 184. Podcasting skews younger. This isn't anything you haven't heard before, figured out for yourself, but I think it's a great jumping off point to also mention that as a podcaster, you're a lot different than the average person. Most people aren't as familiar with podcasting as you are. You might've been doing it like me, you know, what, 20 years? Of course you should know about podcasting now. No, 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 no. A lot of people don't. What is that on YouTube? This is why we have to differentiate what a podcast is and what a YouTube video is. If you're on YouTube, by all means, be there and tell people it's on YouTube. Oh, okay. I know YouTube. But if you're on a podcast and you're not on YouTube, you got to let them know how to get a podcast. And a lot of people don't. If we want more listeners, we need to make it as easy as possible for them to listen. And for older listeners, that's older than me, (laughs) this is what that means. It means make it easy with a simple podcast subscription page. I've got one that you can steal at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Take the HTML code from mine, switch it over to yours. Again, you can see this at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. This is episode 184. The other thing that you want is you want to have a web player that is on a domain that is easy for people to remember and spell. My domain, for example, Big Podcast. Do you know how to spell it? Yeah. Funny story. (laughs) I ran into a dude, and he was a trademark lawyer or some kind of IP attorney. And he says, Man, you might want to add an extra G to it. That way you can trademark it. Okay, big podcast, B-I-G-G podcast. Had I done that, I would have to say that every single time I told you to go to bigpodcast.com. I would have to explain it every time I mentioned the name of the company. I get what he was saying, but when it comes to people remembering you or when it comes to you getting traffic, you want to have the standardized spelling. Don't make up new words. Don't make up new spellings of old words. When I say the name Anna, how do you spell it? A-N-N-A or A-N-A? If that's your name, Anna Smith, it's good for you to have both. Make it as easy and as foolproof as you can for people to get to where you are. Most people who are watching broadcast television and listening to broadcast radio, they are only tolerating them. They are there because television and radio are easy to access. And I want you to think about those people for a minute. Remember that television host that everybody loved? That one who got fired? What was his name? It doesn't matter. Because there's some new guy who took his slot that everybody's watching now because watching the slot is easier than figuring out where the old guy went and how to access his new show. We'll see these guys on networks that get canned. I'm on the internet now. Oh, okay. And then the conversation ends because nobody's going to bother to find it on the internet. That's what we're up against, because we're on the internet. That's what podcasts are. We are not on broadcast radio. We are not on broadcast television. Is it easier to access on the internet than it used to be? Yeah, yeah. You guys doing the podcasting thing for 20-something years, this is how it worked. We would put the file up on the web, then there was something that would download it to a desktop, transmit it to your iPod. I mean, it was very, very complicated. I remember the day when Apple announced new operating systems that could instantly download a podcast to your phone. And it was a game changer. That is the reason that podcasting is blown up. Instant access, but it's still not as easy as turning on broadcast television or cable television or broadcast or satellite radio. Here's the bottom line. Strive to make your podcast as easy to listen to as possible. Then 
I've got 10 podcasting lessons for you to follow. That's going to bring personality to it. That way, people are going to follow you wherever you go. They're going to work a little bit harder. I've got the links for this. Newsletter.bigpodcast.com, the episode 184. Hey, speaking of rules for a great podcast, here are 25 of them. I hijacked this one. The original list, it was about newsletters. But most of the things listened also apply to your podcast. Things like podcasting is an owned channel. You own it. YouTube doesn't own it. Nobody can take it away. But the real ownership, that also belongs to your listener. I talked about this a minute ago. We got to make stuff for listeners, not just for us. By all means, do the podcast that you want to do. You don't have to do a 180 and completely change it, but tweak it, man. Make it just a little bit easier to access, just a little bit more entertaining for the listener, just a little more friendly for the listener. Listeners are in control of our podcast, at least when it comes to consumption. Second thing, identify a clear audience for your podcast. Doing this will dictate episode content and direction, basically everything. This podcast is called Build a Big Podcast. It is about just that, building a big podcast. It is about marketing a podcast, making a better podcast, making a more successful podcast. I have people contact me all the time. Hey, man, I do a podcast. Can I be a guest on your show? What do you want to talk about? Well, I thought I'd talk about, blah, blah, blah. It has nothing to do with podcasting. Just because you have a podcast doesn't mean you're a guest for this show or that content is going to work for people who are listening to this podcast. You are here listening to me right now because you want to build a big podcast. Consider that with your podcast. Know who the audience is, then make content for that audience. Third thing, your listener comes first, not you. I just talked about this. I mentioned it about three different ways. And this is a good way to do it. Your listener comes first, not you. Make it easy on your listener. Think about what the listener wants to listen to. Otherwise, they're not going to be listening. If you want to do a podcast like I do called The Sausage Factory, and this is a practice podcast for me. Every single day I get behind the mic and I read, I improvise, and I think on my feet. It's just a practice podcast. There are no edits but it makes me a better host. It's not meant to listen to. It's meant for me to do. If you want to do a podcast like that, by all means. But if you want to do a podcast that people listen to, your listener comes first, not you. Number four, be willing to go where others aren't. Have an opinion. That's one way to do it. Edit your podcast. Care about audio quality. Bringing personality to your podcast. Going a step beyond what others in your niche are doing. That is going to make your podcast stand out. There are other podcasts about podcasting. You may listen to them. You probably do. I mentioned one at the very beginning of this episode. Ask the podcast coach, Dave Jackson and Jim Cullison. Great. People who listen to them also listen to me. They're not competition to me. But at the same time, you've only got a limited amount of time. I want to make my podcast sound as good as it can. I want to edit it. I want it to be focused on podcaster. Consider that for your podcast. Five, make your choice hyperscale or hyper niche. If you want to go big, go wide. Sex, drugs, rock and roll. (laughs) I don't know what wide is. I more or less work in niche markets. My radio show, Music Business Radio, it is for people in the music business. That is it. Originally, we were talking to sponsors like Coca-Cola, Ford. We're going to go big, going to go big. What we ended up doing, instead of going wide like that, just doing celebrity interviews, for example, We went narrow. It is even more about the business than it used to be. It is about publishing. It is about distribution. It is about how to get your first record deal. It is about selling a million records. Not the sexy stuff, but the down and dirty, nitty gritty stuff. Hyperscale or hyper niche, your choice, but you can't have both. I've got more thoughts on all of these at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Also, the original list, I mentioned five of these things, There are 25 rules for running a great podcast. You're going to like this. It's at newsletter.bigpodcast.com, episode number 184. Isotope Neutron Elements. You can get it for free. Are you doing custom music mixes for your podcast? If you are, you're going to find this tool very helpful. Isotope Neutron Elements. That's what it's called. The new edition just came out. They're giving it away for free. I mentioned this three issues ago, issue number 181. Isotope just updated its RX line of software, and it is a great tool for spoken word audio, such as podcast. I'm using it on this podcast. If you're just getting started with audio plugins, that is where I would start, Isotope RX. But Isotope Neutron Elements, if you're doing anything with music mixes, take a look. You can get it for free right now. I've got the link at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. This is issue number 184. Let's talk about release deadlines. 
I appreciate all the hosts, the producers, the editors who do what it takes to get an episode out on time. Consistency, timeliness, those things are important, especially to listeners. And if you have both of those things, that will help your podcast grow. But if you are finding yourself in a constant struggle to get episodes out on time, you may want to consider changing up your production process or the schedule. Maybe you bit off more than you can chew. Maybe you're too busy right now. That's okay. You are a human. It happens. Your listeners are human. They will understand. But you got to keep them informed. My experience and the experience of others that I've talked to this about is that listeners are willing to wait for quality content and they'd rather wait than have you do something that harms yourself or makes you unable to release anything. Listeners want you in this for the long haul. They feel like they know you. Parasocial relationships, man. You are their family and they will wait until you are okay to put out your episodes. Take care of yourself and make your podcast work for you in order to reach people and consistently reach people. Daily, uh, you know, maybe it's too much. A couple times a week, maybe weekly. You be the judge of that. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. I've got all the ways for you to contact me at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Classified ads, these are things that will help you to grow your podcast, get more people to your podcast, make a podcast that people care about, PodPage, you need a website for your podcast. You can join over 25,000 podcasters and automatically create a beautiful listener-friendly podcast site from your RSS feed. I love this thing. Plug in the RSS feed. Instant website for your podcast. You can use your custom domain, the one that's easy to remember, bigpodcast.com. Not B-I-G-G podcast.com, but big B-I-G podcast.com. PodPage is the simplest way to create a podcast website. You can try it for free. I've got a special link for you newsletter.bigpodcast.com. This is issue number 184. Cast Magic, automated episode notes. 35,000 podcasters have used Cast Magic to automate episode notes, highlight clips, podcast summaries, blog posts, social media posts, and newsletters. You can upload podcast audio and Cast Magic does the rest. I love it. You can try it for free. I've got a special link for you at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Thanks for listening to Build a Big Podcast. When you are ready, this is how I can help you even more. If you want a shortcut to building a podcast that people care about, let's make that happen. Here's what you can get for free. Right now, I've got something called Big Podcast Extra. These are short emails to help you build an audience, attract clients, and make more money via podcasting. I've got a link to this at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. You can also get the Podcast Growth Toolkit. I call this a Swiss Army knife of podcasting. These are little tools, things that are going to help you to get your episode agreements in place, your episode titles in place, your episode format in place. This will help you to grow your podcast and you can get it for free. It is at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. If you really want to grow your podcast, you want personal help, Big Podcast AMP, that's the way to do it. It stands for Audio Monetization Program. This is personalized coaching for indie podcasters to help you grow your podcast audience and build your authority, brand, and reputation. I will work personally with you. We will get down and dirty into what you were doing right and do more of that. What you were doing wrong and change that. Make it something that works for you. Make it something that grows your audience, gets you more sponsors, something that spreads a message, something that makes you money. If you want more information, I've got the direct link for you. It's bigpodcast.com slash amp, A-M-P, bigpodcast.com slash amp. Thanks for listening to Build a Big Podcast. You can subscribe right now with one click at bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. I've got three buttons for you, one for iPhone, one for Android, one is an RSS feed. I've got a QR code that you can scan This is another page that you can steal. Steal it. Steal it. Take out Build a Big Podcast and put in the name of your podcast. Change the links, of course. But feel free to swipe the copy, the design, the graphics. Do it. Bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. That's the page. Go there right now to subscribe before you forget. And I'll see you on the next episode of Build a Big Podcast.